Welcome to the Folktale Project, this is Dan Scholes. Today, we have the end. The end of the final tale from the retelling of Waverly that we've been telling for quite some time now. And we've seen war, and we've seen death, and now we're going to see the end. This is part two of the final tale of Waverly as retold by our author, Samuel Crockett. This is The Baron Surprise, Part 2. Edward and Rose were married from the house of Dacran some days after they started, according to the custom of the time, to spend some time upon an estate which Colonel Talbot had bought, as was reported, a very great bargain. The Baron had been persuaded to accompany them, taking a place of honor in their splendid coach, and six the gift of Sir Everard. The coach of Mr. Rubric of Dacaran came next, full of ladies, and many gentlemen on horseback rode with them as an escort to see them well on their way. At the turning of the road which led to Tully Vale in, the bailey met them. He requested the party to turn aside and accept of his hospitality at his house of Little Vale in. The baron, somewhat put out, replied that he and his son-in-law would ride that way, but they would not bring upon him the whole matrimonial procession. It was clear, however, that the baron rather dreaded visiting the ancient home of his ancestors, which had been so lately sold by the unworthy Malcolm of Inchgrabbit into the hands of a stranger. But as the bailey insisted, and as the party evidently wished to accept, he could not hold out. When the baron arrived at the avenue, he fell into a melancholy meditation, thinking doubtless of the days when he had taken such pride in the ancient barony which had passed for ever away from the line of Bradwardines. From these bitter thoughts, he was awakened by the sight of two huge stone bears which had been replaced over the gateposts. Then down the avenue came the two great deerhounds, Ban and Busker, which had so long kept their master company in his solitude with daft Davy Gelatly dancing behind them. The baron was then informed that the present owner of the barony was no other than Colonel Talbot himself, but that if he did not care to visit the new owner of Bradwardine, the party would proceed to Little Vale in the house of Bailey Macweeble. Then, indeed, the baron had need of all his greatness of mind, but he drew a long breath, took snuff abundantly, and remarked that as they had brought him so far he would not pass the colonel's gate, and that he would be happy to see the new master of his tenants. When he alighted in front of the castle, the baron was astonished to find how swiftly the marks of spoilation had been removed. Even the roots of the felled trees had disappeared. All was fair and new about the house of Tully Valen, even to the bright colors of the garb of Davy Gelantly, who ran first to one, then the other of the company, passing his hands over his new clothes and crying, Bra, bra, Davy! The dogs, Bran and Busker, leaping upon him, brought tears into the baron's eyes, even more than the kind welcome of Colonel Talbot's wife, the Lady Emily. Still more astonishing appeared the changes in the so lately ruined courtyard. The burned stables had been rebuilt upon a newer and better plan. The pigeon house was restocked and the populace with fluttering wings. Even the smallest details of the garden and the multitude of stone bears on the gables had all been carefully restored as of old. The baron could hardly believe his eyes, and he marveled aloud that Colonel Talbot had not thought fit to replace the Bradwardine arms with his own. But here the colonel, suddenly losing patience, declared that he would not, even to please these foolish boys, Waverley and Frank Stanley, and his own foolish wife, continue to oppose upon another old soldier. So, without more ado, he told the baron that he had only advanced the money to buy back the barony, and that he would leave Bailey Macweeble to explain to whom the estate really belonged. Trembling with eagerness, the bailey advanced, a formidable roll of papers in his hand. He began triumphantly to explain that Colonel Talbot had indeed bought Bradwardine, but that he had immediately exchanged it for Brerwood Lodge, which had been left to Edward under his father's will. Bradwardine had therefore returned to its ancient lord in full in undisputed possession, and the baron was once more master of all his hereditary powers, subject only to an easy yearly payment to his son-in-law. Tears were actually in the old gentleman's eyes as he went from room to room so that he could scarce speak a word of welcome either to the guests within or of thanks to the rejoicing farmers and cotters who, hearing of his return, had gathered without. The climax of his joy, however, reached when the blessed bear of Bradwardine itself, the golden cup of his line, 
mysteriously recovered out of the spoil of the English army by Frank Stanley, was brought to the Baron's elbow by old Saunders Saunderson. Truth to tell, the recovery of this heirloom afforded the old man almost as much pleasure as the regaining of his barony, and there is little doubt that a tear mingled with the wine as, holding the blessed bear in his hand, the Baron solemnly proposed the healths of the united families of Waverly Honor and Bradwardine. And that is it, the end of this story of Waverly, a tale that, you know, is so large in literature, and which, honestly, I had never read before, and I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot, and I do, I do hope that you did as well. Next week, we'll be starting something new, and I'm not going to tell you, it's going to be a surprise. This is Dan Scholes for The Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com. You'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And please, if you enjoyed this tale or just enjoy the program, please head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen and leave a rating and a review. I appreciate it. As always, thank you so much for listening.